Hey guys, welcome back to Casual Commander. So today, I want to talk about a comment that was brought up to me in a few videos past about CDH and EDH, should they be separate? Uh, the guy that left the comment, he was like, hey, I'm a CDH player, and for the longest time, I've thought that there should be two separate ban lists and basically be two separate formats. And I've kind of heard that before. Like in the last couple months, I've heard that occasionally be brought up. But it just kind of hit me different this time, and I was like, you know what? I think that might actually solve the commander. So today I want to talk about what would be the pros and cons of if that happened, and do I think that should happen? So I'll start with saying, yeah, I do think that CDH and regular EDH, I think, need to be split in two. Because the bottom line is, those two pl like play the players that play those two things, so casual commander players like me, and a CEDH player, we want two separate things out of the game. They want to win. Period. That's it. Don't care. They're competitive. That They want to win. I want to win, but I want to win with the stuff that feels like it was me. Like, it was my personality that like, I'm putting... Like, they say, like, they want you to... In Commanders, you're supposed to be able to express yourself. And I feel like... Like, if I won with, like, Cyclonic Rift, I'd be like, this isn't me. This is, like, Josh Lee Quiet. Like, get that out of here. That's disgusting. For me, I'm like, I want to use something like big and dumb and stupid and cool. Like, I Dinosaur is one of my favorite decks. Is it a super complex deck? Nope. You just play Gishath and be like, all right, swing out. Dino, 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 Dino. Like, that's what I that's what I like to do. I like playing high CMC stuff. That's just, it's just what I like. I like playing cards that, mo like, mo anyone knows this when you play Commander. One of the coolest things you can do is play a card and everyone goes, what did you play? What is that? Because they don't see it. I don't, when was the last time Josh Lee Kwai played a card that someone was like, not to rag on him because I know I did that in the last video. Uh, and Josh, if you ever do see this, I don't actually hate you. I hate your play style, but I don't hate you. So I'm sorry. But uh, yeah, like he, when he plays like Cyclonic, do you think anyone's like, man, that was great. And they're like, lame, like seen that, done that. So anyway, I think that just like those two formats, I just think they're completely different. And that also means that the cards that we use are different. I think they should be. I think there should be two different ban lists. So for us as like casual players, the ban list should be more extensive. Not be, I'm not trying to take a card that like, if you have some combo that like could be really degenerate, but it's not something that everyone's doing. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about the staples that you see over and over again. Smothering Tide, Ristic Study, Cyclonic Rift, Soul Ring. Not that Soul Ring is like, Soul Ring's not busted a sense of like, and, and they say like, you know, that's the constant thing is people say like, technically, statistically, the person that plays Soul Ring is most likely to lose the game or whatever. I'm like, I get that because you make yourself a threat, but you still can look at the card and go like, this card costs one and taps for two and it could be put in every deck it is ridiculous. So, um, yeah, like, there's just a handful of cards that I'm like, they don't really belong in this format. Cyclonic Rift doesn't belong in this format. But there's no, like, man, that was so awesome that I got to, like, have my board wiped, your board wiped, and this other person's board wiped while nothing happened to you. Cost you eight mana, seven mana, whatever it is. Um, Smothering Tide Treasures is another thing. Like, I want to do a separate rant about, like, I probably want to do a rant about, like, my five, like, mechanics that I hate the most. Treasures would be up there just because it's all that Wizards of the Coast seems to be making right now is just things that make treasures. Because it's like, the only way we know how to help out uh, colors that are struggling is just make them make treasures. So, uh, yeah, so I definitely think that for the CDH players, as far as what the ban list would look like, I mean, I Flash Hulk, that whole combo that was a problem that they banned Flash and they put Protein Hulk back as legal. Um, I think that the Flash Hulk thing, you could still have Flash banned because I'm sure it would still be a problem if it was legal. But I don't really know a whole lot of cards that would... Uh, I know there's a few, like, one-drops. Like, there's a uh, blue one-drop that allows you to just target yourself and draw three cards. Stuff like that's obviously going to stay banned because a CDH player would play that in a heartbeat. But um, I think their ban list could be down to, like, you know, next to nothing because they're pretty much, like... There's a lot of bigger mana spells that might be busted, but they'll never get around to even doing it because it'll take too long. They're, like, not even going to waste my time with that. So it would be kind of cool if us as casual players could get, like, Iona, like I've said before, Sylvan Primordial, Grizzlebrand... Uh, I think Jesse's card he wanted was Sway to the Stars or whatever. Like, it'd be cool if we could use those cards, and that way it'd just be, okay, we're kind of off in two separate worlds. Because I, who are you going to tick off? Like, if you're if you're a person that generally is playing 
what would be considered more CDH as far as like how how high your win rates are, the cards that you're using to win, um, staples that you're using. You're no one's getting no one's banning your stuff. You're just going over over here to play with like the big boys. Like you're playing with the guys that want to win and can actually give you some of your medicine back. Because for us as casuals, it's not really that fun because we're not really on the same playing field. We're not wanting the same thing. Um, I, I, I'm trying to use a sports analogy here, but it'd be the equivalent of like if you're playing a basketball game, a pickup basketball game, and like say there's a dad that's like just playing like one on one with his son, and his son's like ten, like, and you go like, hey man, like, and you grab like your buddies, you're like, hey, let's go play them or whatever. It's like they're not wanting the same thing. They're just trying to play like a casual pickup game of basketball. Does that mean you're so much better than them because you beat them? Not really. Like they're just wanting two different things. Uh, so I don't know. I just, I just think it's, it, it needs to be separate because it is two separate things. So, uh, the pros and cons, the cons for if you separated them, I don't know. You probably get some people that would be complaining that, you know, if, if the regular commander ban list was a little heavier with stuff, like I said, cyclonic or if would be banned or six study, you would have the people that are like, Hey man, I'm a casual player. I just like to have that one card in my deck. You get that. But I don't know, like, Yu-Gi-Oh! wasn't perfect. Yu-Gi-Oh! had a lot of things that were wrong with it. One of them being that, like, they just would make a card and knew it was going to get banned to, like, the power creep part of it. But part of the thing that Yu-Gi-Oh! did right was that if something popped up in too many decks, they're like, let's get rid of it because people are tired of it. And I think Commander, we just let certain things just, like, go. And I'm not, I, like, I, I mentioned in the last video, I think, with Jesse, I said, like, you know, in green, if someone is playing a multicolored deck and they play a Rampant Growth, no one's like, oh my god, you played Rampant Growth. Like, god. You may see Rampant Growth in, like, a ton of green decks. That doesn't mean it's a busted card. So there's a difference between, like, a staple and then a card that is a staple that also, like, is a big factor why you win the game. The amount of advantage it gets you. Like, Rampant Growth, you play it once, it gets the one land, that's it. Now, I don't know, could you copy that spell? I guess possibly, whatever, but that's dealing with other cards. Ristic study by itself is just like, I'm going to sit on the board and I'll either tax the crap out of you, or more than likely, somebody's not going to be able to pay the one, and they're like, I need this card more than you drawing a card, so you're here, you can have it. The amount of value that it gets you is ridiculous. And Cyclonic Rift, like I said before, there's a lot of cards that if you played a, hey, Wrath of God, like destroy everything, I'm indestructible, doesn't bother me, whatever. There ain't a lot of cards that say, hey, I can't be bounced back to the hand, so it's, I don't think there's any. So... Cyclonic Rift just answers all the problems, as Josh Lee Kwai says. So, uh, yeah. I do think uh, the cons, like I said, I can't really think of anything that would be that bad other than a few people complaining about a few cards. The pros, I think maybe the CEDH players wouldn't be happy because they'd now have to step up and face people that are on their level and they wouldn't be able to beat up on people that are just trying to have fun. So I think they'd complain. But as far as a casual perspective, I would love it because there's just, so, there's just cards that I, I'm tired of seeing. Like I said, they're clearly... They want to do something different than me. We all want to win, but we want to win with our certain flavor and not just, I don't care what it takes, I just want to win with whatever everyone else is using. So that's the main difference uh, between that. So I don't know. Tell me what you guys think in the comment section below. Uh, I don't know. Like, like and subscribe if you'd like. But I would like this message to be put out there because honestly, I want the rules committee, and I'm sure they're aware of this conversation, but I want... You know, the professor of Slayer Community College, I'd love to have him sit there and do a dice removal with Pleasant Kenobi and talk for an hour about should there be two separate formats, CDH and EDH, just be completely separate. And I think they kind of are already. Like, we kind of acknowledge them as two separate things. Like, um, if someone is doing a, a play or whatever, a lot of times the CDH players will be like, this is CADH. Like, they'll state what it is. So... I think it needs to be two separate things because there's too many times where they talk about the rule zero conversation and someone's not being honest about what their deck power level is. Cause I just don't, I don't think that it works. I just don't, I don't think the discussion works. A lot of people just undersell what they're playing. So I think it'd be better if instead of letting that person be the person with a good conscience that goes like, yeah, maybe this is too powerful for this player. Most times they won't do that. They love beating up on people that they know like, yeah, your deck's not the same level. Just, just ban a few of those cards and be like, if you'd like to play those cards, you can move up to the big boy table and you can play CDH. You can do that. 
If we're playing casual down here, we're just trying to have fun. There are certain cards that just don't really match the format. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. I would love for a bigger channel to talk about this conversation. So, uh, I'm going to come at you guys with some more videos. I got a few more topics I want to cover today. So, um, I'll just upload them. I don't do the whole, like, oh, wait for another day to do that. I don't really care. So, anyway, um, have a good one.